Now, before you start the production, we want to make sure that we have the audio configured as well as the video. So let's take a look at configuring the audio coming into the TriCaster. The TriCaster has an internal audio mixer built in, and there are two tabs down here. And this tab shows us the external audio controls, and this tab shows us the internal audio controls. Now, you can bring them up separately, but very often you do want to have them come up at the same time. There is a way to do that as well. If you come over here, there's a little gear in the upper right hand corner of this screen. Let's click on that gear and you've got several different variables. The one that we're going to worry about right now is uh, link audio mixer tabs. And if I check mark that, now when you click on one of the audio mixer tabs, both of the audio mixers come up. They still operate independently on the way out. But clicking on one of them to engage it brings up the whole audio mixer for you. And again, if you don't want that to happen, you can just come over and turn that feature off. And now they're completely independent once again. Now, once inside of the audio mixer, again, this is the eight external audio feeds coming in. And you can choose whether you want them to come in as mic or as line, as digital AES EBU. Mic and line, of course, are going to be coming in through the XLR connectors, the analog connectors. You've got AES EBU, so you have B and C connectors back there to bring in digital audio. And of course, you can also use embedded SDI audio and line quad. Each input, either as SDI or as line, can support up to four channels of audio. But in the analog mode, you can only bring in two channels of audio per video input. Now, just above the pop-up to choose what type of audio is coming in, you'll see that you get a little uh, speaker icon. And again, clicking on that will mute it. And you get the international sign for no, the circle with the line through it, showing us that that is no longer valid. So that's how you can mute individually any of the inputs, just by clicking on that. Now, down here below, we have follow. And we do have audio follow video within the system. If you're using audio follow video and you're on camera one, you're going to be hearing the audio that's attached to input number one. Now, if you switch to camera three, the audio from input number one is going to fade out. The audio from input number three is going to fade up. And that's audio follow video automatically. So it'll automatically follow that video switch during the live production. And you don't have to worry about riding the faders. You also have the ability to make any of these tracks mono and you can solo the tracks. Solo gives you the ability to create a group of tracks that you can send out of the auxiliary audio output separately. So let's say you wanted to have all of the audio inputs for the main production, but you also wanted to stream the production. And on the stream, you wanted to have a separate audio output happening. You can do that as well simply by creating a group of audio inputs that you want to have minus whatever you don't want. So let's say I don't want to have input number eight attached to it. And then come over to your auxiliary tab and say you want solo to be what that's configured for. Now, anything that has solo checked off will be part of the auxiliary audio output. But if solo is not checked, it will be omitted from it. Main program is going to take everything that's being uh, run through the mixer. So you do have the ability to have two separate audio outputs. There is also a headphone jack available on the back of the TriCaster, and you have headphone volume control here on the mixer.